Hello everybody and welcome back to my rebranded channel and in today's honest review we're gonna have a look at a small layer one called Sado. That's the game. We will naturally begin with a team, we'll talk about a white paper, we'll talk about their token and the prices and we'll have a look at the community with my criticism included at the very end. Any kind of support will be greatly appreciated including liking, commenting or subscribing or using my referral link if you want to register and trade on Bybit. It's included in the description below. The goal is to do this full time. We need to begin with the overview of what is Sato. Sato is a third generation layer one that started as a Web3 Foundation recipient. What I love about them is that they openly call out the massive Infura problem, which is only ever gonna get bigger. Sado basically eliminated the possibility of such a problem by the dApps running directly from the browser, so there is no need for a centralized plugin. Sado pays the nodes instead of only the miners. And finally, Sado has a unique consensus algorithm while mining is still present. Miners get 50% of the reward still, and the remaining 50%, as I've already mentioned, goes to the node that wrote the transaction. And now let's dive into their team. Well, I get the impression that the Sato is all about two people, about two founders, which is uh, David Lancashire and uh, Richard Paris. So let's talk about both of these. As for David Lancashire, uh, he has an extensive experience being a founder because he founded Language Systems Limited as far in the past as July 2008. Uh, as he says about himself, he also did a little bit of the programming there. He even says that he handled all the programming as a sole founder. Administrative and content development work and even he was doing a little bit of the hiring and business development. So a little bit of the everything, which means that he's a geek. Uh, that's not generally what you want to see from a CEO. I know that he officially isn't CEO, but to be honest, it's not even clear that who is actually CEO in Sado, whether it's David or Richard or both of them together. As for Richard, he is a founder of Paris da Costa, which is apparently a, a Swiss watch brand. And he has extensive experience being a CTO uh, in Edan's group. And it looks like Beijing is the city where actually Richard and David met. So that's, I think that's pretty interesting. Important thing to say is that none of these guys have uh, direct experience of finding, of funding a $1 billion business. What I like about David and Richard is that they openly call out uh, the problems in a blockchain space. Individuals are responding to their individual interests and not their group interests. That's what's happening in the economic uh, tragedy of the commons. Now, in blockchain, we're going to see the exact same problem, but we see it with miners putting data onto a blockchain. Their individual incentive is to make the money today, even though it hurts the community, it increases costs, it makes the blockchain unsustainable over time. They are building Sato from the grounds up, including community, on the ideas that solve these problems. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about these problems and about how Sado is solving them in the white paper section, but I will definitely mention now Infura problem. For those of you who are unaware what Infura is, Infura is very centralized API. It's very convenient for the dApps to run through Infura. And that's why majority of the dApps run through Infura. So uh, I give a huge thumb up to Richard and David for calling this out. Technical people have come along and they'll say, well, you look, miners are going to pay for the blockchain and they'll pay for the peer to peer network or they or they won't get paid or stakers in Ethereum will provide light client support or they won't get paid. And repeatedly, these people have just been empirically wrong and horribly empirically wrong to the point that in, uh, in Fura last we heard, it was the vast, vast majority of money is collected by one company. And I give huge thumb down to anybody who says Bitcoin and Ethereum um, are two massively decentralized protocols. Besides, we've already seen that this is a problem in November 2020, when Infura was launched to other version of Ethereum client and ran into the consensus bug. And big exchanges like Binance even uh, suspended ERC20 uh, withdrawals at that time. So we've already seen that this is a big problem, but still too little people are talking about it. Uh, one of the reasons why is that Joe Lubin, he actually owns majority of the blockchain uh, news portals. 
next time when you're reading the news, think about who owns the text that you're reading. And since I've already mentioned white paper, let's dive into it. The white paper was only six pages long, so it was a welcome change after Cardano's academic white papers that I couldn't go through, filled with math. So I happily went through this one, and here are the notes for you. So let's begin with the basics. Sado pays not only for mining and staking, but also for all activities that contribute economic value. And thus they eliminated the majoritarian attack by paying uh, for activities that contribute economic value. Now, Saito actually, uh, Saito project uh, is built on the problems of the blockchain, like they are calling the certain problems and they found solutions or their kind of solutions because there are many other, pro uh, many other projects that are solving these problems in different ways. The white paper is filled with calling out these problems and offering the solutions. That's uh, how actually Saito solves them. BTC blockchain is at the moment 364 gigabytes, so okay, that's not that much. It actually a little bit more, maybe this is a couple of months old information, so it's maybe a little bit more. But Ethereum full node, arc, full archive node is over 10 terabytes today. Like over 10 terabytes. So that's really a lot. And every year with all the DeFi and everything that is on, on Ethereum, every year it's getting like way bigger. So that is unsust unsustainable. Sato with their current technology, they are able to actually handle t uh, 100 terabytes a day. Okay, so another problems that we uh, that they talked about, uh, we've already mentioned them. Tragedy of the Commons and Free Rider problem. So tra Tragedy of the Commons, briefly what it is, it's that when individuals don't care for the group's needs and it leads to collapse. So that's uh, very obvious. Free Rider problem, it leads to under provision of inter infrastructure because under provision, it means that nobody pays for it. And it leads also to, to over provision of paid activities like mining. Okay, so now uh, I drew a little picture for you of how Sato actually works. And this is one of the key inventions of Sato. They call it automatic transaction rebroadcasting. And this is, for instance, something I've never seen anywhere else. It's original and they have patented it. And I'm going to talk about patents in a, in, a, in a while. Bitcoin chain looks like linear chain, like a permanent linear chain when, you know, there is black block after block after block and then you get the full history of the blocks in a, in a note, in a full note. Uh, Sado has a permanent, it has a temporary layer and that layer kind of a cycles and once the epoch ends, once the whole cycle is complete, that is customary, that is even adjusted as we go according to the needs. So there is not, it's not fixed state uh, how long the epoch has to be. But then certain data from this epoch is rebroadcasted into the next uh, following epoch, into the first block of the following epoch. And that's, for instance, any UTXO which contains enough tokens for rebroadcasting, any unspent UTXO uh, which uh, contains enough tokens for rebroadcasting is automatically rebroadcasted. So you can pay to be rebroadcasted to the following epoch. And that's the main uh, key. And that's why, you know, you get always finite size of the blockchain um, this way, because you always start over from, from the first block, you know, every epoch. So it's like, it's rather simple idea, but uh, they're building on this and it's interesting idea. And it's definitely good that there is a project like Sato that is evolving, at least uh, having different ideas, again, different uh, uh, solutions to the problems that are out there that is calling out the problems have different solutions so I really love that there are projects like this because even if Sato is not gonna get any, adopt any adoption that's very uncertain if it's ever gonna get any adoption but even if it doesn't um, it's still going to help the blockchain space as a whole cheating nodes that do not store whole blockchain are incapable of producing new blocks because they do not know which transactions to rebroadcast. Now let's have a look at the, some of their terms. So I brought up two, two terms for you. One is routing work and one is golden ticket term. So routing work uh, is mean for a node to create a block. It's kind of an energy or like, you know, like money is energy. It's derived from transaction fee added in every transaction. It drops with a number of hops in its routing path. It's in the nodes incentive to find the block as soon, as quickly as possible. 
Okay, now golden ticket, it uh, pays on its nose. Uh, so Sato pays on its nose for collecting fees regardless of who produces blocks. So um, the, the honest node collects the difference between a routing network in block minus routing network required for block production. So that difference, that what the nodes collect. A golden ticket is a puzzle that requires knowledge of hash. So it cannot be um, calculated in advance, uh, knowledge of hash of that particular block. When the solution to golden ticket is found, allocated fees are released and split 50-50 with the miner that found the golden ticket. And know that participated along peer-to-peer -peer routing network. So that's also a key idea uh, and a key mechanism of Sato. And uh, I like that. Most of the cryptocurrencies are still experiments, you know. So uh, it, that, that's the playground where you ought to try new things and to see if they work. And, you know, if there are 10 projects that try different ideas, different approaches, how to solve the problems like this, like one of them or maybe more of them are going to succeed and are going to be better than others and they are going to get the adoption. So thanks to the system, nodes are paid depending on how much they service the needs and so they compete for access to a lucrative in, uh, inbound uh, transaction flow. Nodes are trying hard to find the the applications, the dApps that really provide the value to the user that have lots of traffic. Thanks to the fee security, 51% attack is uh, basically eliminated. And also I'm mentioning, you know, that there are more uh, elements of Sato like secure multi-party voting. And we've already mentioned the automatic transaction rebroadcasting, but there is a huge, you know, red note that's patented, so they have patented these ideas, but I'm going to mention that in my criticism chapter. So no comment on that just yet. And now let's have a look at the token. So this is their token, Sado. Its, uh, it's use case is very similar to Ethereum's token use on Ethereum. Uh, important thing to notice is that Sato's token is not used for governance because governance is not really figured out yet on Sato. That's a very important note. Um, Sato token is currently ranked on 570th place on CoinGecko. Its total supply and max supply is 10 billion. And today its price is somewhere around 1.4 cents uh, at the time of shooting. Now let's have a look at the price performance. Is not on many centralized exchanges. You can get it on Gate, however, and you can get it on the centralized exchanges like Uniswap. Ever since the summer, Sato has actually, there was a little bit of the hype uh, around the new year, and since the summer lows have gone actually 20x. Although Sato is extremely uh, low cap, so it's also associated with high risk, of course. And um, uh, currently, it has gone down when we don't count this week it has gone down about 86%. So again, <clears throat> Sato is actually uh, still outperforming most of the altcoins and small altcoins down there because they're uh, they're down 90%, 95% already. And Sato is not down 90% yet. I uh, drew one red area for you. This red area, it is also on weekly. It's, it's very obvious. This red area is an area where, uh, this is not a financial advice, but where I think lots of people are gonna take profits. And I think even though, uh, you know, the smaller the market cap, the more unpredictable. So the try to predict such a small cap like Sado is rather futile. But I'm just saying that this red area is uh, reasonably, in my opinion, reasonably good profit take. And it's also like 4x from where we are at the moment. These small caps, one massive new can swing the chart the other, the other way. Like if they have a massive release, although I am not aware of any upcoming massive releases because the mainnet is coming online in uh, stages. There is not like a magic switch there. Like, uh, you know, tomorrow there is no uh, mainnet tomorrow. Uh, like today there is no mainnet and tomorrow there is. So um, I don't see such a huge day, but you never know. There might be some listing. There might be, I don't know, something. Although as far as listing go, this is what uh, Richard has to say. You know, a lot of them are expecting that you come to play the game, you play the game with them and you grab some tokens, you exercise, you get some hype going and then you dump on retail. Right? That's the game. 
that's that's what they're doing and the project can make a, a lot of money and the exchange make a lot of money out of that initial spike and then you see if it lasts or if anything comes out of it the purpose is for that initial spike and to take some money off the table as a pro project we're just not interested in doing that so they're trying to act very transparently as even as far as the listing go more transparent than many other yeah, competing projects so that's a thumb up for them um, remember that the fact that Sato has not yet gone down 90% it is also a little bit of the red flag because most of the other altcoins are down 90% 95% even so it's uh, it's actually uh, you should be still careful if you want to buy in Sato at the moment today I think I would be cautious and with that let's have a look at their community This was my first time when I decided to share the drafted version of my video with a community on their Reddit and I tell you I could not have made better choice. From now on I'm gonna make this a rule, I'm gonna do this every time I do honest review. Sado community came together, pointed out a couple of errors in the video, so I improved it. I also had very engaging discussion with travel Jan 22 as far as reddit goes the community of sato felt pretty vibrant to me given how small the market cap of sato is right now we're looking at their twitter they have 41.3 thousand followers and the activity seems to be pretty organic i have zero reasons to believe that there is some kind of a boosting mechanic implemented this is their telegram that there is a 13,567 members that's pretty a lot given the market cap so i'm pretty surprised uh, it's very nice to see that yet again there is david lancashire communicating with the community and this finally is their discord channel it's fairly small there's 180 people online for instance number protocol numbers protocol it's smaller cap than sato yet there is 300 people online but whatever is going on on the Discord is more focused on the actual all-around development of Sado and less of the useless spam chatting and price discussions. Unfortunately, just like in every community, you can't dodge every now and then the speculation discussions and people trying to shill stuff when when it drops a little bit thinking that that's, be that's the best price and not realizing that it can actually go down by another 70-80%. But overall, my uh, experience with Sato community is a positive one. I think um, they work hard to build a solid community from ground up. Community that is fundamentally oriented. And now, let's dive into my criticism. Well, I only have two points for my criticism. The smaller part is the fact that I don't see how the governance of Sato is yet figured out. I don't think it is. My second part is the patent protection. Also, you can find it in, in their white paper. Patent protection has been uh, secured on these techniques. And we welcome contact from other blockchain projects looking to incorporate one or several of these methods into the networks. I think that cryptocurrencies and blockchain space in general is about open collaboration and not about taking some idea for my own, which as a philosophy is perhaps another step in mankind's maturing and perhaps another step towards the free energy, which even Tesla talked about 100 years ago. Yes, the Sado team says that they are open to uh, share these ideas with anybody who wants to use them, but then it begs the question why the patenting in the first place? All in all, I fail to see how these patents will bring any value to Sato. I actually think they will cast bad light on Sato. Sato points out at subtle but key infrastructure problems and offers unique solutions to them. Just by doing this, Sato is already making the blockchain space better as a whole. And even if Sato doesn't win the adoption competing with DAX and other fifth generation projects, if they continue building up the way they do, I think Sato might prove to be able to stand in the test of time. So which one, which game would we like to try? Why I struggle <laughs> with two players? I have no idea how to play that one. Place five additional f uh, influence in... Okay, so I place one in Czechoslovakia because I'm from the Slovakia, so... Okay. 
<laughs> we are definitely going to lose this game. And even if Sato doesn't win the adoption, and even there might be there might be just some fields like the. <laughs>